ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 236 of The Zombie Train. This is uh, the show where we talk about stories from World War Z. I don't know why I started with This Is. It should be I am your host, Ellis, otherwise known as Train Man. We're watching footage from Under Construction this week, which will be coming out at about the same time. And this week we have the continuation of the question from last week. This question from... Uh, Danville Junction Rail Fan, formerly known as ALMRR. Uh, did you use any of the three main central steam locomotives or the two footers? So, we talked about the main central engines last time. Now we're going to talk about the two footers. The two footers, the, the feeders of thousands, as a matter of fact, uh, on the East Coast, post Great Panic, post Zombie Train Incorporated founding. And I don't that's not an exaggeration. Uh, for those that don't know, back, uh, well, back before Penn Central, Maine used to be particularly famous for its potato crop, which was shipped by rail. Uh, Penn Central ruined this because they left the entire shipment in Selkirk Yard until it rotted, and then nobody shipped by rail anymore to get potatoes out of Maine. And since then, there hasn't been that much in the way of potato shipping from Maine. As far as I understand, at least. It's certainly not nearly as prevalent or not nearly as celebrated. The, you know, the potato trains were quite significant, and during its period as a, as an actual railroad, the Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington, I believe somewhere around 20%, maybe more or less, you know, maybe uh, plus or minus 5%, it's a, it's a, it's a ballpark, uh, of their outbound traffic was potatoes. Uh, like 50% was wood, or 40% was, was pulp wood, but a pretty significant portion was potatoes. So, they had experience in this, and this is something that I had, uh, found out about, and decided to look into, and realized while we were up there that that can be so incredibly useful. Now, the WWNF, this was some of the first track that we decided to rebuild, or to build, um... Aside from issues like bridges, tunnels, etc., uh, this is some of the first major stretches of right-of-way that we had, you know, decided to work on. Aside from the things regarding uh, getting the rail back into Newport. So, we it took a crew up there, and it was, it was a relatively... I mean, it was a relatively medium-sized crew. It was like 25 or 30 people. And we posted them up there in the town of Alna. Well, in the in the general area around the um, around the depot there. I believe it's Sheepscot Depot is the place that they operate out of. It's, it's either Sheepscot or Alna. I don't remember which one is which. But we sort of built a little tent city there. They, you know... They didn't have much at this point in time, but they had plans for a lot, and they had sort of, um, they had the right-of-way still. Uh, they had, it, it's mostly clear, it was mostly clear. So, we knew that, okay, all we've got to do is we've got to, uh, start building a line, we've got to start working out, um, some space for farms, you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. We've got to recover uh, steam locomotives, so we were uh, getting the two-footers from down in Portland, bringing them up. Uh, we threw together, like, a five-stall roundhouse and turntable, which wasn't there at the time. Um, and we started building the line out, and uh, the first thing was to, you know, before we could even really get the engines up there, the first thing was to build the line down to Wiscasset itself. And what ended up happening really was the other way around. We took trains of supplies to Wiscasset and built up to Alna. So that um, that was, I mean, all things considered, it was a relatively, uh, it was not a significant amount of time. It was a couple of months at most. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was not bad at all. And so we absolutely tore through that. 
and then we had those connected, and we could start actually shipping things down. There aren't, there weren't a lot of farms up there, and the people we'd shipped up there were largely people doing work on the railroad uh, because we wanted it done ASAP. And so we immediately then started with getting uh, people that knew how to farm up there. You know, we were we were started clearing these swaths of land outside of Wiscasset, outside of Alna, um, these areas around. The Little Little Depot, again, I think that's Alna Center is the name of it. Um, you know, and they had provided us, you know, the the railroad there, what they had was very, very well set up for expansion. It was very well planned, and it was also very well archived. Uh, they had most of the plans for what they wanted to build already there, and they had a lot of historical stuff, uh, and they sort of... It, it sort of taught us how to do that kind of stuff on an extremely limited materials and uh, materials and technology budget. Because you're out there in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Maine, uh, when when winter comes and it came, uh, it really made uh, it it really made a mess. It it was not easy for us to get too much during winter, and obviously it's not like you're shipping out too many crops during winter, but you do need to keep the people up there alive. It wasn't really a seasonal operation to operate the railroad as much as it would have been nice to have been. Uh, the people had to, you know, sort of tend and pay attention to their land year-round. So, yeah, the, it could have been easier. It was not. It was facilitated by the two-footers immensely, and so we ended up having, like I said, I think five engines up there, maybe six, if I can recall correctly. It was uh, three and four, seven, eight, and nine, right? It should be three, four, seven, eight, and nine. No, there were six, because ten was there as well. So we we didn't have use for the other two-foot gauge networks, because they were too far out. They weren't... Uh, they weren't closely connected enough to a standard gauge railroad that we could make use of them. So basically we went and we got all of the equipment, and this was by truck, and this was a pain. It cost us a lot of fuel, uh, which was something at this point we did not have much of, to bring down all of the equipment that was stored in Phillips, Maine, uh, and then bring up all of the equipment and stuff that was stored in uh, Portland, Maine. Uh, this also meant to to get a more direct connection. I believe I'm trying to remember now. To get a more direct connection, we had to fix something rather significant. I'm trying to remember now. I need to bring up a, a railroad map here to recall. But the Wiscasset, Waterville, and Farmington was, I think, 56 miles. 50 two miles, some, something around there, uh, and that, oh yeah, no, we didn't, we didn't have to do that, we considered it, and they had like 44 miles of it still owned and preserved under their charter, not cleared or anything, but it still existed, and so we were able to get trackage all the way to Waterville, and... That was kind of it, because other than that, it fell short and didn't get to the other place it wanted to go. But we did build straight to Waterville, and then the other branch, which was, I think, originally the main line, just sort of went out into the wilderness and served a lot of little farms. And this, it became the kind of railroad where you have little flag stops every, you know, quarter mile, because it's every single farm. Uh, the farms were not that big. They were mostly operated with animals and not uh, gasoline-powered equipment. Again, because gasoline was in such short supply. Uh, although we did equip, uh, or we did have to build from scratch a lot of a lot of freight cars that we did not have otherwise, like tank cars and uh, hopper cars for the two-foot gauge. And we couldn't just EBT it and throw some trucks on the other ones, because at, the, at that point you're just getting, it's getting to be far, far, far too small. So, the gauge is getting too small, and the cars are becoming too large. 
So we you had to engineer some some interesting solutions and build these mini freight cars that we didn't have otherwise. Lots of box cars, uh, a bunch of flat cars as well, mostly for maintenance of way stuff. Uh, we wanted to get like a crane out there. They have some these these weird pieces of maintenance of way of equipment that I'm not really sure I can accurately describe, but they were helpful. And most of the railroad was built was rebuilt in, you know, because the pace got picked up pretty quickly. In a few years, we we had made it to Waterville, and that's farther than the railroad originally ever got. The issue with making it to Waterville is we had to, uh, we had to, uh, we had to fix the trackage through Augusta, which... We didn't think it was originally going to be a problem, but it definitely was because the current freight main line that runs between Waterville and Portland is pretty far out of the way. Not that the line through Augusta was that, you know, that uh, so incredibly important, but when we had the connection up in Waterville, it was often easier to run something up on the standard gauge and then run it down the narrow gauge, or vice versa, through uh, Waterville. And it, that just wasn't... It wasn't great to have to run out via Lewiston, because it was so far of a departure. It wasn't a very friendly route to run. Um, and as well, it had some infrastructure issues that cropped up. And these, these weren't things that were uh, so dreadful, but during the winter's... Uh, during one of the winters, we had a storm which gave us a lot of washouts because it runs along a lot of lakes. Uh, the route through Augusta runs along a river as well, but it was a little bit better fortified, uh, I guess because they were sort of expecting erosion, even though it was ignored for a period of time. Uh, it was it was just a sort of weird thing to have happen, where it's like, well, we've got to move to the backup line now. I mean, everyone, was, again, was sort of crossing their fingers for it anyways because they wanted that to happen, but, um, yeah, just, you know, that, that line got severed in a few places and we jumped on the Augusta line instead of trying to fix it because to patch up the track in Augusta was a lot easier. And again, at that same time, we were, that was during the span where we had not built the whole railroad yet, so we were rushing supplies to Waterville to bring... Uh, to, to basically build from both ends and meet in the middle, uh, which was enormously successful. There's a reason why we built a five-stall roundhouse, had six engines. Engine number six was stationed up there and was building down. After that, uh, generally you'd have one engine there at any point in time, and then the other one's coming down. So... It was, yeah, the two-footers got a lot of use. They were so incredibly useful, and we wanted to expand them. Uh, we wanted to just sort of build out towards Farmington, because we knew that we could get plenty of open space over there, plenty of uh, open areas, farms, uh, rich soils, stuff like that, but that was never really necessary, especially because we had um, we had the Rumford branch that went out you know, towards Rumford, and that ran through some of the same kind of areas, so that was good enough. But the two-footers, uh, their their usefulness cannot be downplayed. Again, they, they kept a lot of people fed. They kept a lot of people fed. Uh, that was also uh, the... It was sort of the return of, of reefer cars as well, the... And we were using iced reefers a lot. We weren't necessarily um, we weren't necessarily using gasoline-powered reefers. When we got our hands on solar panels, we tried that out, but the panels weren't good at generating enough power to refrigerate in the long run. So what we ended up doing was we'd create uh, we'd build solar farms with whatever power we had, or you know, or with whatever panels we had. Or we would just build big refrigeration plants. Or we'd basically make blocks of ice to put in the to put in the train car. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you next week. Train man out.